All right, AB, I forgot to record the first part of today's lesson, and there were like eight of y'all absent. And so I thought y'all would appreciate seeing how to do the homework here. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So uh, what we're doing for homework is this sheet right here. And on this sheet, they tell you to uh, – Estimate the slope at various points, and then from those points, sketch a graph of f prime. And, and you can do that. We're going to um, make it a little bit bigger picture than that. So uh, <clears throat> we're looking at a graph of f of x, and we are trying to sketch the derivative. So we're not finding the equation of the function. We're not finding the equation of the derivative or anything like that. We just want to sketch a graph of it. And what you have to remember is that your derivative does tell you the slope of f which means the y coordinates, whoa, let's see if I can write this, the y coordinates of f prime are the slope, or I should say represent the slope of f at that x coordinate. Uh, so what I could do, I could just like randomly pull some x coordinate. So let's say I want to look right here. So at that point, if I were to sketch the derivative, that derivative, or not the derivative, but if I were to sketch a tangent, that tangent looks about like that. And that's a pretty steep tangent. You could say that that slope is, I don't know, we'll say about two, three, something like that. And so if you think that is a slope of three, then at that X coordinate, whatever that X coordinate is, you would need to go up to three on your Y axis. And that is where you would plot the Y coordinate for your derivative. So my derivative is going to be up here because at that point, I think the slope is about three. So I'm putting my derivative at a y coordinate of three. Um, well, we're not going to look at it that detailed. We're not going to try to distinguish between a slope of three and a slope of two and a slope of one or anything like that. We're going to go much bigger picture. Uh, and there is only one particular slope that I will always look for first. And that slope is a slope of zero. So I'm going to look at this graph and I want to identify any places on this graph where I think the tangent line will be horizontal. And that happens twice. I see two spots, one up here where the tangent, I kind of misdrew that, where the tangent's horizontal and another one down here, I have a horizontal tangent. So at those two X coordinates where it looks like my horizontal, my tangent's horizontal, my derivative would be on the X axis. So I'm going to start by sketching <clears throat> the X intercepts of my derivative. And that'll be wherever your function has a zero slope. After that, I'm going to look at my function and I'm just going to look at big picture slopes. I'm not trying to get very detailed. I'm really just going to look and see if my slope is positive or if my slope is negative. So if I start from the left, I notice that we have a pretty positive slope. Um, now, I'm not going to get wrapped up in the details, whether it's three or four, but I do think that is a steep positive slope. So I'm going to say that's big positive, which means that that X coordinate, my derivative needs to be very positive. It needs to be very high above the X axis. As we follow this graph to the right, my slopes become less positive, still positive, but the slope is actually decreasing to that slope of zero. So my derivative is going to start up high and we're going to come down to that zero. I'm going to come down to that zero like so. I'm at this zero slope. Then between those two zero slopes, I have a negative slope. My function is decreasing. Um, now I'm going to look at how steep does it get? And if you look at the steepest point of this graph right in the middle, the steepest negative slope, that is not a very steep negative slope. So I don't want to take this derivative graph and come all the way down here and back up. Because if I go all the way down there, I'm saying this is a very steep, a very big negative number. And that's just not that steep, especially when compared to what I started with. I definitely started with a steeper slope than I have here in this negative spot. So instead of going all the way down there, we're just going to come down a little bit to the steepest negative slope. And after that, we need to come back to the zero. Whoa, that was really ugly. I'm going to come back to that zero like so. And then after that zero, we go back to positive slopes. So my, my slopes are positive everywhere after that. So my derivative is going to be above the x-axis. And while that's a little bit shaky, but that's the idea. We're going to have some just very rough graphs of what the derivative would look like. And then on occasion, you can do this. And on this function, if you look at that blue graph of f of x, f of x looks like it could be something like x cubed plus some other stuff. But it looks like an x cubed graph. And I know that if I find the derivative of x cubed, I would get 3x squared plus whatever's left. 
And if you look at my derivative, it does kind of have that parabolic, that, that quadratic appearance. And so that kind of makes some sense. So that's what we're going to do to sketch our derivatives. We look for zero slopes first. Then we look big picture. Is my derivative positive or is my derivative negative? Positive means above the x-axis. Negative means below. And that's determined on whether you have a positive or a negative slope of f of x. So let's look at one more. Last one here. Um, here, when I start trying to graph this one, when I start trying to graph the derivative, I'm looking for a zero slope and I just don't see one. Sometimes you don't see that zero slope. It gets really close to zero over here. And if you want to, you could say that that and if you wanted to say that's exactly zero, since we don't have the equation of this graph, I guess you could say that. But I, I just don't think it is. I think it's just really, really, really close to zero, but still positive. So I'm going to put a point very, very close to the x-axis, but still has a slight positive y-coordinate, like 0.1 or something like that. Um, now, if there's not a zero slope, sometimes I will look for slopes of one because a slope of one is that nice 45 degree angle. And if now I can cheat, I can, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Um, I can grab this line and drag it until it is tangent. And if you look for where this slope of one is tangent, it happens right there, there, right there at X equals one. And so since it appears that I have a slope of one right here, my derivative is going to be at a Y coordinate of one at that point. So I have a, a so I graph my slope of one because I didn't have any zero slopes to start with, like I did on this first example. So I have that slope of one. Then I look at everything else, and this graph always has a positive slope. It starts really steep positive, and then it comes to that slope of one. Then my slope is still positive, but decreasing towards zero. And so we have a crazy steep positive slope. So we're going to start crazy high. We're going to come down to that slope of one, but then I need to show that the slopes are getting close to zero, but never approach, never touching zero. And so we're just going to go forever that way. And I would even think there's a vertical asymptote right here. It looks like we start infinitely steep right here. That looks almost vertical at the beginning. So there's your derivative graph for number two. Uh, and like the last problem, you can't always do this, but sometimes you can. This function, this graph for f of x should look familiar. It crosses at one zero. And then it crosses at what appears to be about 2.71, which would be E1, which means this graph is most likely the graph of the natural log of X. And we know that the graph of the derivative of natural log X, just for memorizations from our derivative rules, is 1 over X. Well, now we can look at the graph when we sketched the graph of the derivative of ln X. You can see that that piece does look like the first quadrant portion of 1 over x, because if you graph y equals 1 over x, you'll have a piece in the first quadrant that looks exactly like what we just drew. There also is one in the third quadrant. Of course, for ln x, ln x is only defined for positive x's anyway, and so that's why we don't include this piece in the derivative. Uh, so there are the two examples. Uh, if you can on this sheet, I want you for homework this weekend to finish the other seven. They get a little bit weird towards the end, but if you can, See if you can identify the equation or a potential or a reasonable equation. Like number one looks kind of like y equals x squared. Now it's not exactly x squared because it doesn't go through the point one, one, but that's pretty close. Uh, you should recognize what the equation is for number five and for number six. Uh, and even if you can identify the equation, I still want you to sketch them as if you don't know the equations. I want you to analyze the slopes and graph the derivative based on how you are interpreting the slopes. I don't want you to find the equation, find the derivative of the equation, and then graph that. That's not what I'm shooting for. I want you to analyze the slopes and sketch based on the slopes. And you need to know how to do that because you will have problems like numbers seven and eight where you don't know the equation. You're going to have to sketch those based on what you think about the slopes, not the equations. Uh, and that's it. So do that this weekend. We'll go over that Monday and y'all have a great weekend.